Welcome back everybody, it's OG here. And before you, you can see a large rocket. That rocket is designed to carry a Jewel Rover. Yes, a Jewel Rover. I realized that I hadn't seen a Rover on Jewel. And though I've seen a couple of people landing on Jewel, to the best of my knowledge, no one's taken a Rover there. So I decided to do it. And I'll tell you, it wasn't easy. It took quite a lot of engineering. Just the rover alone was tricky. Though I did modify a stock one, which made the process shorter. But then the process of getting that rover onto a working rocket, something large enough to carry a large rover to Joule, well, that was entirely a different animal. And that's the story of this video in a nutshell. I'm going to show you a couple of the failures first, and then we'll move on to the more successful rockets, uh, including the one I finally used to get to Jewel. The problem with the rover I built is that I didn't just want a little robot, nothing like what we've got cruising around Mars at the moment. I wanted something that could hold a Kerbal. I wanted a proper big 4x4 all the bells and whistles rover. And that's what I built. And it was big and it was heavy. And I couldn't just load that onto a small rocket. And then to get something that had enough Delta V to get that rover all the way to Joule and at the same time not break on the launch pad because the rocket is too big that was the real problem it's especially difficult in ksp2 at the moment because of all the bugs and glitches and things and as you can see in the footage that's playing now again and again and again i had failures i would put a rocket on the pad and it would just say rocket is broken it's not going anywhere and it would be back to the drawing board well, I'd put the rocket on the pad and something would immediately fall off or explode. And the annoying thing about KSB2 is that often when you load a rocket and something small breaks, as you can see in this example, it just says vessel destroyed. And there's nothing you can do about it, even if a tiny little bit has broken off. Whereas in KSP1, little bits and pieces do break off, but you can still fly the rocket. Also, the rockets are wobbly. The joints are not very stiff and the rockets tend to bend when they fly and that's just rather terrible. There are ways to get around that. You can change the configuration files a little but I'm trying not to do that. I want to play the game as stock as possible. The only thing I've changed is the flag modification so I could add in my OG flag. But otherwise I like to run a absolutely standard game. And I will see how things progress after the first update see if the physics has become better if not then i may have to consider changing the rockets because building a rocket even this tall is a problem and i, I tried much taller ones and they were just absolutely terrible with this design try as i might i could not get the srbs to function and I think it was with this particular rocket that we see at the moment that I finally realized, well, maybe it can lift off without the SRBs. Though in my initial building calculations, I thought I would definitely need SRBs if I was to get this thing to Joule. The problem with a Joule trip is it takes just so much Delta V. You've got to get off Kerbin, you've got to circularize, you've got to burst burn out to Joule and then you have to slow down and then you have to descend to the planet's surface and you have to fight the gravity of Joule itself and I didn't quite know what to expect on the other side um, you can see the SRB taking off and the wobbly rocket left behind but crucially the wobbly rocket is flying sort of and I haven't fired the center boost on that rocket but at the end of the day, you need 
a rocket with a lot of delta v which is why i really wanted to have the srbs but i just couldn't seem to get them to work along with the liquid boosters this flight was quite remarkable and i'm sorry that this is happening in the dark um <laughs> Again, that is a limitation of the game at the moment, and there's not much I can do about it other than make sure it's light before I load a, a vehicle in, but you're not always thinking about that when you hit the load button. You can't really speed up time on the pad always, um, because the rockets just break. And when you come out of time warp, or God forbid you hit the quick load button because you've saved or something like that, then the rockets just tend to start tearing themselves apart and obviously that is no good so I'm afraid I lost many rockets in that manner before I just decided to try and skip time warping to light and that I would just fly in the dark if I happened to load into the dark so sorry about the dark it's not my fault sort of So with this rocket, yes, this is the one I realized now, I didn't really need the SRBs, even though without them I have a very small uh, thrust to, very small amount over one in my thrust to weight ratio. That is the worst possible way of saying that. <laughs> my thrust to weight ratio is only just over one without the SRBs. I was amazed at this particular flight. It went on for about 20 minutes and this entire flight was basically just avoiding a crash. All I was trying to do the whole time was get the rocket to fly vertically. If you look at the um, SAS little selector, I've just selected the up arrow, the one at the top of the little circle on the bottom left next to the nav ball and I just I just want the rocket to go vertically and it's not doing that but somehow I managed to fight it for 20 minutes and keep the rocket in the air for that long before finally I just gave up because at a certain point you realize you've, you've got no fuel left and even if you do make it to space, you're probably not going to make it to orbit. And even if you do make it to orbit, you're definitely not going to make it to Joule. Let alone the things you need to do once you're out at Joule. You see the rocket actually had some positive upwards movement at some stage. Yeah, this one's climbing now through 2000 meters. And that was giving me hope. Though granted, there was obviously a lot less fuel on board by this stage because that rocket is almost empty in the what do i call them liquid boosters and the four liquid boosters strapped to the side of the main rocket and there the boosters finally burn out and i ditch them and the rocket breaks the wrong part gets ditched and i am then left with my second stage engine uh, which still has a decoupler on it for some reason and that is a nuclear rocket with not nearly enough thrust to weight so this is the rocket i finally went with it's the one you saw in the previous little launch minus the srbs and you can see how it's wobbling around on the Okay, I say launch pad, but it's actually the runway. I decided to use runways because they are bigger flat surfaces. The With the launch pads, the rocket tends to hang off the edge of the pad, and that is part of the reason why it keeps breaking. So here I am using the runways. You'll see though that it's difficult because this ro ro rocket, rocket, this rocket is so wobbly. Uh, if you look at the nav ball there, it's, it's taking off sideways and I definitely don't want that. I need it to go vertically 
and as you can see with the SAS it's locked to a vertical trajectory but getting it to go there very tricky once again and I'm sure it would be a lot better if the rocket was more stable more rigid but with KSP your control node its location matters a lot and when your control node is at the top of a big wobbling rocket the control inputs that it gives down to the engines are they're affected a lot by the movement up there at the top uh, now you could make theoretically a control node lower down but that just invites a whole host of other problems and it's easier just to keep restarting and hoping for the best ideally you would have rockets that actually don't wobble around like noodles let's hope the developers get to that and then this if I remember correctly was my final launch the one that actually worked out you'll notice I did not time warp it I just took off straight away so that the rocket was as as little bendy as possible prior to takeoff and the guards smiled upon me and it worked even though it's in the dark and the clouds still look terrible incidentally on the topic of these terrible clouds I've seen many people suffering from terrible cloud syndrome online quite a pity because they've done great work with the volumetric clouds and when they do look great then they do look great um, it seems mainly to affect AMD cards but I have seen a few NVIDIA 3000 series which have also been affected I just really hope they sort that out because all Kerbal Space Program 2 has going for it at the moment is looks and sound those two things are excellent everything else is worse than KSP1 far worse than KSP1 or the absolute worst ever no disrespect to the devs but we did pay full price so fix it. Booster separation. But here I'm trying to figure out why my engine is still glowing and forgetting that I've limited the thrust to only 2%. Rectified and away we go. So I plan to circularize because it's preferable to crashing into Kerbin. And as you can see though, I don't have a lot of liquid fuel left. And that does become problematic. I would have liked to have had a lot more left, but as you could see, I couldn't get SRBs into space. What I did do for the first time on this rocket was to use a nuclear engine because of the much greater ISP I was hoping that would really help me with the transit to Joule and some of the slowing down once I reached Joule 2 however I was disappointed with the performance of that rocket I was I was really hoping the ISP would make a bigger difference but it just kind of didn't and I didn't see much benefit to using it to be quite honest I'm sure in further testing it will become more apparent and when I use when I learn how to use it better maybe I need to use multiple nuclear engines together um, maybe I mustn't burn it in orbit of a planet because it's really a deep space engine but it, it didn't do much for me Yeah, you can see I am now running out of fuel and I still have a lot of burning to do because that is still Kerbin down there. And I still have a long way to go. Right, so this little trick is to speed up the time warp and you just load another rocket onto a pad and then you can increase the time warp greatly. And you do that to get Joule into the correct relative position. And you don't always get it right on the first time, you have to go back and do it again and do it again and do it again. 
but as you work out your orbits sort of trial and error orbits at the moment since the orbit calculator thingies what's the word i'm looking for the intercept calculators they, they don't work so well yet as you saw in my docking and rendezvous video spoiler alert it was not successful <laughs> 